Eastern Pacific Cyclones developing on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for July 8th. Well, it's been a few days since our last tropical weather bulletin, and to be honest, there's not been very much movement. Uh, still, two tropical systems that have a good chance of developing into our next cyclones, both of them in the eastern Pacific. We're unclassified with 27 storms on the chart right now for this year. Day 38 of Atlantic hurricane season and there's no areas of interest here, so good news for those who like a quiet Atlantic. Although the US severe weather scene is still up and active, with another enhanced risk in the central US today. In the eastern Pacific we've got two 90% chances now. Uh, they've been slowly and steadily getting closer to organising, but time is running out for the first one. And it looks like it will only end up being a weak tropical storm. The one behind it will probably have a better chance of intensifying and it will be smaller as well. In the western Pacific, no areas of interest here either, but a lot of cloudiness towards the eastern part of the basin over Micronesia. In the Indian Ocean, things are looking fairly sparse as well, although a few areas of thunderstorms over either coastline of India and inland as well. And a big line of storms. Um, popping up across southern China all the way through to Japan. No areas of interest though for tropical activity in either of these two eastern hemisphere basins today. Latest satellite imagery looks like this. Look out for any of those red zones that show high amounts of precipitation, some of them near the equator in the far east there, a few across Africa as well and in one or two African waves, and uh, the eastern Pacific system also producing a decent amount of rain there. Looking at the close-up view, uh, or closer I should say, from the GOES satellites and you can see both of these two disturbances that are active now, the first one especially active, and you can see it gradually moving towards the west-northwest there, blowing up a little bit of convection but we're still waiting for more rotation to occur. We've pegged its pressure at about 1002 millibars probably, it's a broad system uh, that will take its time to get traction, uh, but it does have a lot to it as you can clearly see on the water vapor imagery to its east and partly sheared off by its outflow that other system that we're also watching both of them with a high chance of formation Atlantic looking like this a massive dry ocean there out of, out of the main development region and a few little areas of um, tropical uh, thunderstorms that are occurring and a lot around the coast of Florida and the Bahamas as well right now the Central American region looking very active at the moment, especially along the Pacific coast and a small part of the Yucatan. Lots and lots of storms blowing up there, producing large amounts of rainfall. But we're mainly looking at that western system there, that's the East Pacific system that's likely to develop fairly soon. Sea surface temperatures are good for these two systems, very warm, over 30 degrees Celsius off the coast of Mexico. It still drops off a massive cliff though once it gets past uh, the Baja California Peninsula. The Atlantic also extremely warm temperatures off the Florida coastline and around the Bahamas and up towards Louisiana, over 30 degrees Celsius pushing 32 in a few spots. Gulf Stream looking very good and healthy and the area out at sea in the Atlantic also above average. Western Pacific very warm conditions off the coast of the Philippines extending eastwards. A large chunk of area there over 30 degrees Celsius just makes you wonder uh, we could be in for possibly something big later on down the line with all of this heat that's being welled up. North Indian Ocean, the Bay of Bengal looking okay still. The Arabian Sea of course is uh, cooling down a lot with the uh, winds that are blowing from the southwest as they do at this time of year. And these uh, minor seas in the Red Sea and elsewhere looking extremely warm as well. This is the southwest Indian Ocean, cool there now, really cooling down. The Australian region also much cooler now that we're into the off-season. And in the South Pacific, those temperatures also receding as we've been looking at for a few weeks now. 
Sea surface temperature anomalies are well above average in the eastern Pacific Ocean, but more so in the equatorial region, showing very much the El Nino effect that's beginning. The Atlantic, though, is a much wider area of above average temperatures, particularly further east in the basin, but also in a secondary region in the Gulf of Mexico, extending through to the Bahamas, the areas that we pointed out. Western Pacific, the South China Sea, is warmer than the rest compared to average, but in general it's only slightly above. In the Atlantic, oceanic heat content looks very good in the Caribbean Sea and also around the Bahamas and Andros Island particularly, a small spot in the Gulf of Mexico. Eastern Pacific, the best conditions are hugging the coast of Mexico, but of course the mountains along the coast will hinder tropical cyclone impacts or strength of tropical cyclones. And in the Western Pacific, a huge amount of heat built in there as well near the Philippines. GFS computer model looks like this for the next five days. First, that broad system that moves west-northwestwards, only a weak tropical storm forecasted from the GFS, but it does maintain tropical storm intensity for a little while. And then that second system forming behind it, that's actually also pretty large too. Maybe not at first very briefly, but it does end up getting to be much larger as well and stronger than the first one that we're watching. Both of these systems should become at least a tropical cyclone, that's a depression or higher, and most likely they'll also get named. Western Pacific also looking out for maybe a hint of activity towards the end of the five day period, a small low pressure system passing just south of Guam and then moving northwestwards through the rest of the Philippine Sea and then it's halfway there by the time we get to the end of that five day period with tropical storm force winds. So that's something that we might watch out for as we get through next week um, and we'll be keeping eyes on that because you'll see in the longer range what happens next. In terms of rainfall expectations from both of these systems near the coast of Mexico, like the previous uh, one that we had with Adrian, of course Beatrice was more of an impact, uh, but you'll see that these storms will pass away from the coast, but will probably enhance rainfall on the coast, even though it's not directly related to the storms. So, rainfall amounts will approach 8 inches, maybe higher than that, maybe 10 inches there, 250 millimeters for large parts of mainly mountains uh, in the coastal regions of southern Mexico, but also in a few spots along the coast as well, maybe around the, um, I've forgotten the name of that gulf now, towards the east, the Gulf of Tehuantepec, uh, and also that 24 inches over there with that first system on the west, of course that is well out to sea, thankfully. Well then, uh, the moderate range, this is day 5 to 10, we're looking at this second system which actually performs much better in those much colder waters. I'm not convinced by that, I have to say, uh, but the GFS wants it to reach category 2 status over there. I don't know whether that will happen or not, maybe it's a little bit further south and that might give it more of a chance actually, so I suppose that's probably the angle they're leaning on, but I would suggest that that weakening process would take place a little bit more quickly than what's shown. In the Western Pacific, this system then does develop in that medium range, day 5 to 10, and it starts moving up towards the northwest, maybe a little undecidedly, in a small system eventually, moving through the northern Ryukyu Islands of Japan and possibly a threat to the Korean Peninsula there, becomes a small typhoon and then moves north and swivels around towards the northeast. That's probably not too out of character for an early season storm to be concentrated into quite a small system like that, otherwise it probably just would wouldn't work. That's all the serious stuff done with. You can scan the barcode and take a look at the Force 13 merch store where I'll be throwing more pillows at you as well as our uh, full season and individual storm animations on request and are still waiting for Hone t-shirt. I'm going to recommend improvements because that's getting a little bit old now just like the wait for Hone. In the silly range then, day 10 to 16 looks like this, Western Pacific might be springing up into action as we do often see in the uh, later part of July and August of course. This is later on in the month, two systems there, one pretty strong typhoon that forms towards the end of that run, but this is day 10 to 16, I wouldn't put any faith into any of this happening yet, maybe that's a third cyclone as well in the South China Sea briefly. A massive mess though, which is certainly what we do expect in July in this basin, so none of that can be ruled out. 
You can talk about it all on our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13 for tropical weather and general weather chat with some of our members from all around the world. All kinds of discussions going on in there. On this day, we were there covering Typhoon Maria, which was peaking as a Category 5 in the Western Pacific. It was on its way towards the westernmost islands of Japan and towards the coast of China, where it eventually made landfall. July 8th was its peak day at Category 5 status. We also had Tropical Storm Chris and Beryl, if you remember those ones in the Atlantic. It feels like yesterday uh, Chris ended up strengthening uh, to a category two and Bell continued to move through the Greater Antilles as a tropical storm. Five years ago, back to today then, in the Atlantic this year, the next name is Don. We're up to date with 2018 then. In the Eastern Pacific, Calvin is next up and in the Central Pacific, of course, it is still Hone, which name will get us to 28. My money's on Calvin. In the Western Pacific, the next name on this five is Talim, and in the North Indian Ocean, of course, it's Tej. 92 storms per year on average. The Southwest Indian Ocean last week switched to their next naming list for the upcoming season, of course, when they get their summer. Uh, Alvaro is the first name on the list this time. In the Australian region, Jasper is next up, and in the South Pacific, it's Lola. That's all for tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again in earnest tomorrow.